Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to be making a page for my 5 inch by 4 inch concertina journal. And I've still got my last two pages to attach. I will get round to doing that at some point. Maybe today I might do it a different day. I'm just going to get started. I'm doing it slightly differently this week. I'm going to make a kind of master board. Uh, if you've not watched any of these videos previously, I am using 12 by 12 scrapbooking papers that I've cut down to 5 by 4 but today I thought I'd do it a little bit differently. I'm going to do a kind of mixed media, use your scraps, master board and cut my page from this. I just thought this would be a slightly different way to do it and I might just chat a little bit as I go along. Now I found some paper slightly reluctant to stick to this so I'm actually going to put a coat of gesso down to begin with. I think I'm just going to use this clear gesso to save me refilling my white gesso bottle. I usually have great big tubs of these and I found it's easier just to decant them into these little, they were little jars that had yoghurt in them. So I'm going to pour some of this out and just spread this out. This is still a bit, well, grungy looking. It was from my project earlier in the week. Let me get started. I can talk and do this at the same time. Yeah, that was left all grungy from my project earlier in the week where I was making the mixed media frame, which was part of a collaboration with Sharon from Texture Junkies and Peg from Two Old Crows. So if you've not seen that, go and check it out. It's a good one, I think. And their videos are excellent. And we will be having another project coming up soon. And I'll be setting the kind of theme for that. I think I've hit on an idea, so we'll see where that goes. So I'm just putting a thin layer on this really just to make sure that my next layer stick to it. Now the reason I'm using these scrapbooking papers is I've got quite a few that I know I'm not going to use for anything else. For example, this fine gentleman here, I'm not likely to use him for anything. The rest of the paper is okay. I've used that for other things in the past. This side, it's, it's okay but I'm not likely to use it for anything. As I put this on, I'm getting something lifting here. I think that's just the nature of the how thin this paper is. But that's okay because I'll be making it a bit more grungy as we go along and that really is just to get a coat. So I'll dry this. It's a little bit thicker there. This will dry clear because it is a clear gesso and then I'll do that side as well. But I'm going to give it a dry before I flip it over. So the clear gesso will give it a bit of tooth. It's The clear gesso in particular is a very kind of chalky feel to it. I think it's a Windsor & Newton I use. And this is much runnier than my white gesso. Somebody asked recently, and I will try and get around to answering the question, what gesso I use because it looked very thick. It is a... Oh no, I think this is a Dela Rowney. And it's thick just because I've had some of it in a big tub for a while. and uh, But it's quite a thick one. It's one that I, I really do quite like. I'll double check that and if it's not Dela Rowney, I will let you know. But I'll answer the question anyway. So just going to do the same thing here. Spread this out. And I don't know if I said, the reason I'm doing it this way this week is just to do something a little bit different and I just figure that whatever's left from the master board, well, I could get potentially four pages out of this or I can make it into other things. So we'll just see where today takes us. Now, I'm actually making this on Saturday. Normally this video would be due to go up in about an hour's time. I did intend to make it yesterday, but I had to have a rest day yesterday because I just was so tired. And I remembered my very first page in my journal. 
not the cover, but the first page on which I wrote the word grace. And that has been a good reminder to me that I need to show myself some grace at times. And while it's good to push myself sometimes, if I really don't feel up to it, then, you know, I need to leave things. I'd had a bad night's sleep. In fact, I'd had two or three bad nights in a row, really bad. And I was again just totally washed out. So, okay, that doesn't need to be perfect. But I'll try this side now. Right, I've made myself another cup of coffee because I really need lots of coffee today. It's 11.08. Don't know how long this will take, but I'm just going to go with it today. I just want to play. I've got my gel plate out. I've grabbed a whole load of colours. There's no colour combo, no colour coordination or anything. I'm just going to put stuff down and put it onto here. I'm going to keep as much of this in kind of real time today because I know some of you like the kind of real time stuff rather than speeded up. Is speeded? Speeded up? Sped up? Gosh. I'll say just now I've got a bit of a headache again. I woke up with it. It's a blooming nuisance but I think it's just because I've not been sleeping right. And sometimes the words will come out wrong, so forgive me for that. Who knows what this colour combo will do. Don't have enough room. Right, should have told you the colours there. This is just a medium green. It was one of the Dale or Rowney Simply Acrylic. Sometimes I see a colour when I'm in the shop and I just go for it. A medium yellow, this is a Reeves, quite a good paint that, and what was the other? Oh yeah, this is a Hobbycraft turquoise. I have all ranges of paint from professional, graduate, the ones that the class is being less expensive, and the craft. And the thing about art is you can use anything. Do not let your budget get in the way. Gosh, that is a nice colour. It's very bright, but no doubt it will change as we go along. So, oh, I'm just going to use it as a stamp go right up to the edges so it will go off a bit, that's fine. I could just roller it on of course. There we go, that's okay, quite like that. Got a little blob, probably off the brayer. Going to see if I can take anything off the brayer just to fill in the little gaps. It's not a lot, but it will do. I think I'm just going to work on one side, dry it off, and then I'll do the other. But that's already starting to change that. We all have different likes, dislikes in terms of patterns and papers and all of that kind of thing. So. You know, it's the old story, you've just got to go with what you like yourself. That's the turquoise again, and I'm now going to use this lime yellow. And it wouldn't do if we all liked the same thing. How boring would that be? I 
and I think I'll add in a little bit of the Payne's Grey just to darken it a bit. Probably a bit too much there. I don't need a lot of this. Gosh, paint everywhere. Again, quite nice. Oh, dropped it on, but that's okay. Quite like that. I'm going to dry this off and then I'll do the other side. So that's dry. I'm actually quite liking the way that's turned out. Still see tiny bits of pattern underneath. That's fine, but let's do this side now. See it's picked up pieces, that's okay. I'm going to do more or less the kind of same colours on this side. No need to do anything different, doesn't matter if they go on in the same way or if there's more of one than another. Let's try a bit of this yellow in it as well. Oh, that is bright and it's thick, thicker than I intended. So I think I'm going to use this to obliterate him. Goodbye. I should really challenge myself to do something with the likes of that gentleman. Figure this is okay. I love using a gel plate just to cover things up like this or just to get some paint down quickly and if you don't have a gel plate you could just use a piece of plastic you know recycled from something or a piece of freezer paper just something that the paint's not going to absorb into right away you can monoprint from virtually anything Here a little plain. I've seen it go over the last couple of days. Don't know where it's come from, it is very small. Right, let's add a bit of turquoise. A 
bit of Payne's Grey. This is getting near done. And some pale olive. Here's the big pigeons going about now. Now, this is going to give this a different look entirely. Quite thick again. So what I might try and do is a bit lighter in places. So I'm not putting it down flat, I'm just kind of Laying it down a little. There are blackbirds chasing each other in the garden. Yeah, I like that too. So again, I'm going to dry that. I think I'm going to take a piece of paper, try and lift some of that paint. Let me see if I've got a bit. Don't know if I'll get much off, but I'll just put it on that side. The sun's coming out, which is nice. this off. Look at this first. Gets everywhere. Okay, these are reasonably dry now, so what I'm going to do is to add some collage all over. I won't cover it completely. I've got my little tub of smaller pieces out. These were the drop sheets that I was using when I was doing some, some of the ink work a few week, weeks ago. I thought that was going to drop. So some quite nice marks on these, so I think I'm just going to glue some down on here and here, both sizes, and just see where that takes us. Now, because I'm simply gluing, I am going to put this bit on at double speed. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. Every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just as two.
that's my first layer of collage down and uh, I've just tried to spread it about, have some pieces overlapping, light the black bits, it doesn't matter there's some kind of off-white bits, there's still some sepia ink in my brush that's already started to colour some of those up and I'm going to add some smaller pieces to this now from my box and then we'll do the other side using these. I really like these pieces so yeah I'll get on just pulling little pieces trying not to overthink that but with the same token if I went to put something down and I didn't think it felt right then I would just move it. That edge is bothering me just because it's very straight. It's better. Right so Smaller pieces now. I don't mind if they match or not. You know, so for example, I'm drawn to using that. And I might just throw a few pieces down. Almost randomly. These are the kind of mark making papers. Get some slightly bigger bits. Just throw them down. And then I'll just glue them in place. Say, but I go without 
If I wrote you a song, if I got every word. Right, I think I'm going to give that a quick dry and then I'm going to put some white gesso on it. So, again, so I'll just push these down a little bit, make sure they're adhered. Not too many bubbles, the other one doesn't matter. Probably ended up putting a bit more on than I intended, but that's okay, I don't mind. Right, quick dry. Right, a bit of a change of plan. Got that more or less dry. I'm not going to do this side, but I will add ink to it. I'm going to do this side because I've come up with an idea for a page for the journal. And it's going to require two bits, but I'll explain more about that soon. So, using two of my favourite inks again, the sepia and indigo. I'll spray it a bit, spread it about and I'll dry it. So I didn't put that on too thick and I let it mix a bit, I will be putting some more on. So even although it was going over papers that already had some sepia and indigo, it's, it's actually just added a bit to them. I've got a bit of a wrinkle here, which I think I'm going to cut into. Let me get a, something to poke it with. I don't actually mind wrinkles and things. I'm just going in with this little palette knife. But that one was sticking up quite a bit, so just moving into it like that. Doesn't matter if it's rough. And I'll just put a little bit of gel medium down and into it and try and flatten it out a bit. Too much, probably. That's better. I did mean to add some gesso to this before I put the ink down, so I'm just going to do that now. I don't want it too thick compared to what I usually do, so this is white gesso, so I'm just going to spread it here and there, but I'm going to keep it quite thin so that when I put my next layer on, it will pick up some of this. For me, the gesso always adds some more texture, more interest, more depth, all of those kind of things. And I just wanted to do things a little bit differently this week, just so, you know, for you that are watching and for you that are joining in, just to give maybe something a little bit different to do. And it also gives myself something a little bit different to do. It's always good to take it right out to the side so you have something going off the page so that it's not just sitting bang in the middle. Although given that I'm going to cut this up, that's less 
important today. This is a great way to use up lots of those scrap papers. I have made another little video. I don't think there's a couple where I'm working with my scraps that'll add to that kind of series of working with scrap papers. that will do. Do my usual scoring in here and there. Again, that just adds interest. Not everybody's cup of tea, like I say, it wouldn't do if we were all the same. So I'll dry that and then I'm going to add some more ink and then I might let it sit for a little while just to dry all the way through. A little bit of lunch and then I'll come back. Jess was dried quite quickly because it was quite a thin layer. Just rub it, it'll pick up any like bits. It's fine. So I think I'm going to add some indigo first, dry it, and then add some sepia. Then all I'm going to do is some ink on this side, but nothing else at this stage. Okay, not quite dry, but dry enough. But you can see some amazing detail in there. Still getting the patterns of some of the papers. I chase the ink so I get these kind of drippy effects. This side, not quite dry yet, but I'm leaving that as is. 
and I'm going before I stop for some lunch and let this really dry out I'm just bringing out my stencil and I'm just going to do a bit of stenciling here and there using the Arteza Gold I'm going to do quite a bit of this today I think because I, I'm going to be cutting this and I don't know exactly what's going to end up where so that's some of the fun in this that I just don't know how it's going to go so I think what I'll probably do is lots of little bits of interest here and there So that wherever I make a cut, there should be some paint on it. And I can always come back in later and do some more if needs be. Smudging it a little bit there. Not going to worry too much. But I am not going to worry at all because it's just paper and paint. Changing the stencil around so that things will go in a different direction, which again just gives it a slightly different look. Right, I'll give that a very quick dry, then I'm going to go and get cleaned up and leave that. I don't need to put any gold on the back unless I put it on inadvertently, which doesn't matter. Right, I'm fed and watered and feel a bit better for that. I would quite like to use my ruler and just tear this down, but I'm a little bit concerned that I might pull up some of the collage because I'm just not convinced that it's totally dry all the way through so I think I'm just gonna what do I want I want four and two fives so move this out the way clean cup clean air hands right so four five five so let's just mark this mind if it's slightly off. Four and four. I should go and get my longer ruler but again this should fit just exactly. Yep. And I'm just going to use my rotary tool to Go up here. So 
So this bit will go off to the side for other projects, possibly in the journal. Now I want five and five. And I'll make two cuts again. Okay, I'm keeping this bit just now because I will be using that again. Right, so. I'm going to decide which I want for my front. Looks a bit off. Is running a little bit off, but I'm not gonna. Is it? Yeah. No, it's okay. Wouldn't matter. So I think I'm gonna make this one my back. And this one my front. Yeah, I'm doing two pieces this time and it'll become clear why in a moment. Just using this as a guide. Because I want to make double doors. Do I want double doors or one single door? Decisions. Decisions. Now, a bit of tape will come down here, fabric, and here. So I think this is about the right width. I don't want them to be much taller than they are wide, so maybe about that and that. So I'll put this on this side. So I'm roughly going to do it this size here. It doesn't matter if it's exactly centred. I might even want it slightly wider. I'm not sure. No. Right. I'm going to score along here with my pencil. Because that will be a cut line. I will score along. Oh, I can't. Oh, that's going. That's going. It's okay. There's something about this pattern on the paper that makes me think it's running a wee bit squint. So I'm going to draw up to about that point on each side. And draw across. Then, what's the distance? So it's about five and a half centimetres, so I'm going to put it roughly. I'm going to draw a line. If 
five would be two and a half and oh, I'm just going to do a light about there won't matter if it's not entirely precise I'm not convinced that's straight, but there it's going to be the rough size of my door, but they will fold out the way. So I want to cut along this line, this line, and this line, and this will just be a, a fold. So something to cut with. I showed this in my video with the grungy frame. It's, oh, it's got a lock on it. It's a funny little thing. I don't even know what it's made of. It's, I mean, it's not sharp to do that. Just like a plastic. But it cut through the cardboard pretty well. So I'm just going to use this again. And hope for the best. I'm really impressed with this because I don't think that was very expensive at all. I thought it'd be a handy little thing if I was travelling, just for cutting thin sheets of paper really. I, did, I didn't think it would go through anything too thick. Oh, It would be better if I cut it in a straight line, but never mind. These are going to be old doors, and old doors are wonky anyway, so that's my excuse. And hopefully this will press out. And hopefully these will fold back. Again, doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight. Okay, so there's our doors that open. This will then be glued down to here. Our doors will open and I think we should have a little something in here but I do want to darken the edges and I'm thinking I'm quite happy with the back the way it is If I should put something on here to reinforce it. Right, I'm going to darken the edges first. Just grabbed some, the first thing I came to, which is black, so that will do because I will probably put a bit of gold on these. really just to get rid of the white marks. Get into the little grooves in there. Mm. 
And of course, on my door opens, you will see the pencil marks, but I think I'll just darken that as well. something like a treasury tag opening just using a bit of this and then I need to put something on in here maybe some words will we do some fine words or an image to make it quite easy by just putting it on with staples. So let me find my stapler. Right, I'm not going to do a treasury tag. I'm going to take this away because it's hard to see against that background. I'm just going to do two little pieces and I've got this dark I think I've got this in black as well. No, I'm going to go for the brown uh, waxed thread. Oh, just a piece from each. Let's cut the squares first. Don't think they need to be too big. I'm just going to cut up here. Roughly the same size. Put those up there. this on each side that we just tie in a bow. Don't want black. I'm going to look at the black. Very light but I'm going to go for the black. Yeah, I think I'm just going to glue a bit on each side. Just enough to tie it into a kind of bow. This might not be big enough. So these are about two and three quarter inches, seven centimetres. Right, I need a bit of glue. Just use some of the three in one, Sunday. Thank you for your about putting acetone in this. I've not done that yet, but I will once I get some. don't think I've got any anyway. Oh gosh, it's sticking to my finger. Get off. Get off. That's it. Let's 
I'm going to put enough on this so I can just glue it right down. A bit more on this one. Right. I want to keep this upside down. Sorry, this is so small. Gonna, oh, come back. Try and put that right in the middle. This one right in the middle. I'm going to attach it. Just off centre. Roughly halfway down. Not quite at the edge. Match this one up. Hope you're seeing that. Back a little bit. There we go. Did that stay in? Okay, got to go round the edges of that in black, but I will do that. In fact, I need to go over my doors again. So I think while well, I've got this glue out, I'm just gonna. Glue this together. Move you out again. Now I think I put the glue on this side so that I don't go too close to the doors. This is not the way to glue. corners and along the edges and I'm getting strings everywhere. It's 
so long as it doesn't spread over the door. Press it together, right? Pressing the door handles right down because I don't want the string pulling out. Still want the bits of glue coming out of there. Okay, so of things to do. I want to go round there with a little bit of gold and round here but I'm tempted to rather than use paint to use a gold ink or gold ink pad if I've got it and then gold paint around here in the usual way and then we'll attach it but oh got some words to put on haven't we or something. Right, let's have a look at that. Right, I'm going to look for some found words. Right, I thought I had some gold ink. Actually, found it. It's gone a bit gross. But I think it'll do. don't want too much anyway. There's a little coming out, but not enough. Right, it will have to be paint. <coughs> really don't want this on too thick. some along this bit. So I'm just doing this very carefully, very lightly, just 
to give the effect. I don't want it too thick at all. I want to do this before I put my words in though. Now I wouldn't want to be opening and closing this all the time because that will eventually crease but and if I was doing something that was going to open a lot and close a lot then I would actually put some sort of hinge on there but I want it to be kind of hidden which is why I didn't want to put anything down there so I'm going to open it up let that dry I'm going to put my words on and then I'll ink round the edge and then I'll let you see it. Right, it's a long video. I've been sitting editing for the last while trying to let this dry. It's still not dry with the glue around here so I won't be attaching the pages today. But I'm, I'm pleased with the way this has turned out. It's going to fit in with everything else but the little double doors are just something different. That's the rain starting. So yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you. I have put video chapters in for anybody that wants to stop and start. So I'm just opening my little door up. I'm I'm trying I'm going cautious because I've got paint in my hand where I've touched it already. I'm just gonna open up my strings. I've got more paint on. Oh come on, come on, come on. That's it. So it was quite interesting the words that appeared. Uh, I hadn't seen these before. But, you know, there was a sentence there, or part of a sentence, that just was perfect. It came from two sentences, I'll explain in a moment. So, there we have it, fitting in with the usual, usual stencil, etc. In gold, to bring that continuity, we've got two pages, two doors, I mean, that'll open up. And inside, there was a double door. She even dared to try the door. So there was, a, there was a double door, was part of a sentence that I found and the other bit was he even dared to try the door so I've just changed it to she and I just thought that was so perfect, double door, who would have known I would have come across that today. So, as I say, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I do hope you've enjoyed this, making the master board to begin with and of course I've still got it's the master board here that I will do other things with. I do like the colours in this. I do like the way it's got. It's actually got a nice kind of bendy feel to it. That would make a nice journal cover, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe some tags. Who knows? That's for another time. But meantime, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry it's been such a long one. It's That's why I often put it at speed, you know, because that's the way. But... Thanks ever so much for watching. Do take care. Bye for now.